So based on exactly what we just talked about there, that our atmosphere tends to absorb the blue light or, or at least reflect the blue light and allow more of the red light to pass through, we now see number one, the sky is blue. So I'll try to draw this like this here. Here's the sun, here's earth, and here's us. And then now here's Earth's kind of outy, outer hazy atmosphere here. And now what our sun does is it outputs all the colors of light at, I mean, not, not at perfectly uh, you know, equal amounts, but it outputs a lot of light of all colors. And really it's coming at kind of all angles here. And so, Partly what happens is that the red light is more or less kind of allowed to pass right through. And, you know, the green light for the most part, a little bit scattered, but the blue light tends to get just scattered all around. So instead of the blue light passing straight there, it gets scattered there or there. Blue light gets scattered there, blue light scattered there, 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 and so on. Now it looks like a bit of a messy diagram, but here's the result. If we're that person there, when we look up at the sky, we see the sun more or less as it, as it appeared, except those blue wavelengths are missing. And that's literally why the sun looks yellow. So our sun should look green, or in fact, white is what you would see if you were out in space. So um, the sun should look, you know, like whiter than it is, but the fact that those blue wavelengths have been chopped away from the direction of the sun means that when we look anywhere else in the sky, we're seeing the blue light scattering from elsewhere, except we don't see as much coming from straight where the sun is. So the sun doesn't quite look as blue as it should, so it looks yellower than it should, but that means that the missing blue light that we don't see in the sun is coming from all over us. Isn't that kind of cool? The sky is blue and the sun is is we'll say yellower than it should be. Yeah, and the sun is yellow. Now, again, like I said, if you're out in space, your eyes would detect the sun as being white, just simply because it emits enough of all light that our eyes can't quite decipher which one is the dominant one. Number two, not only does this explain why the sky is blue in general, but let's take another approach here. Let's say that at a given time of day, uh, here's Earth, and we're viewing it from the top down. Let me make it a little bigger. So here's Earth. And we know from above, Earth happens to spin counterclockwise. So it's Earth rotating around here. And now way, way, way over here, uh, way further than we can see, imagine. Way, way, way over here is the sun. So I'm just gonna draw the incoming light from the sun as if it was directly incident on us. Now, let's see. So the light in, in all colors is coming from the sun. We have the earth and I'm gonna do one more adjustment here. So there's the earth's, I mean to, to draw the atmosphere and there's the earth. And now let's say, you know, first of all, we can look at which portions of the earth at this current time are receiving sunlight. And pretty clearly if the sun's over here, the sun can only shine on half of the half the earth. Specifically, this part is the day, and here is the night. I'll just shade it in. And since the, the earth rotates, remember we're viewing it from above, as the earth rotates, someone that was on the nighttime side of the earth, imagine this whole thing spinning, as they rotate around to there, that's when they start seeing the sun. That's when they would say it's sunrise to them. Because they're just rotating from the darkened side to the lit side of the earth. As they rotate around here, when they're on the nearest side to the sun or when this, we're on the side looking straight towards the sun, they would say it's noon if we didn't have daylight savings, which just happened. And then now as, they, as the earth rotates more, once they kind of hit that, what we call the terminator line is literally, I don't know why I drew that. Um, once we call, it the ter we call it the terminator line, the boundary between day and night on a planet. Once we hit that, now this is completely out, not to scale, a few minutes later, you're no longer going to be able to see the sun. So let's draw the person right here. So in theory, that person right there 
should have experienced sunset about a half hour ago or something like that. But we can still see some light from the sun because what happens in our atmosphere we know is that the blue and some of the green light is, and I'm just gonna use blue and green here, uh, or, or blue and red. The blue and some of the red light, no. The blue and some of the green light is scattered. So the blue light tends to get scattered around here, kind of the same with the green light, but the red light just barely bends around and is able to actually hit us even after we have gone past that terminator line. So what have I just explained? Sunsets are red or sunrises. Because specifically the blue light is unable to pass through that greater atmospheric mass, but the red light is. And again, the same thing happens right there on the morning side of it. So the last effect here, I'm gonna do it a little bit smaller now because, let's see, yeah, I wanna do it like this, sorry. I'm gonna add one more astronomical object to this. And I'm gonna say here we have the earth and then here we have the moon. Now, again, we're viewing this from above. So we know that if, if we imagine that earth is relatively, you know, like fixed, which we know that earth is going around the sun, but we'll ignore that for now. But we, we happen to know that the moon does in fact orbit the earth. And it's, it's not an exact, it doesn't orbit exactly on earth's orbital plane, it actually tilts above and below a little bit. But when it's lined up exactly so that on the far side of Earth, it's also just passing through our solar system plane. We, we call it the ecliptic plane. And we call it the ecliptic plane for a reason. When the moon is on the opposite side of the sun from Earth, and if that moon happens to be perfectly level with the rest of, well, with the sun and the Earth at least, what do we have? An eclipse. This specifically would be a lunar eclipse. When the moon falls within the Earth's shadow. So basically, if the sun is way over here, the sunlight is going to have a shadow zone here where during the moon's orbit, it will enter that shadow. So that's when it actually undergoes the partial lunar eclipse phase as it's crossing this boundary. And excuse me, and then it spends typically about an hour traversing that shadow. So it's a very long, narrow conical shadow, but it spends typically about an hour or so traversing that shadow and then it escapes on the other side. So we have that secondary partial phase of the eclipse there. Now, if you've ever seen a lunar eclipse, you know it doesn't just go black. It goes, it, the, the shadow creeps across, across and all of a sudden it appears a weird kind of reddish, brownish glow. And we can explain that. Because we know Earth's atmosphere. So not only does it cause sunsets to be red, but that light incoming from the sun from both sides, as before, the blue light tends to scatter. And the blue light can't possibly make it through the entirety of the atmosphere here. Nor even if it could, it's, it, it'd just keep on going. But what, what specifically happens with the red light, because it has a much more uh, much greater tendency to bend, it essentially refracts through our atmosphere. And our atmosphere effectively works as a very low efficiency magnifying lens. Most of that red light is absorbed by our atmosphere, but just enough is able to bend through it and go through the rest of that atmospheric mass and, and escape that is able to indirectly illuminate the moon and again, specifically only the, the longer red wavelengths that the sun emits. So what have we just explained here? Lunar eclipses are red. Now, if you wanna make it sound like really kind of scary, you can say it's a blood eclipse or blood moon. Don't do that to an astronomer because they're just gonna look at you like, like you're dumb. We describe them as lunar eclipses, total lunar eclipse, not a blood moon. Uh, we don't get mad when people say that, like I like I am here, but just generally speaking, don't call it a blood moon. Um, so yeah, I mean this this is kind of you know some of the fun that you can have when you start analyzing what happens to different wavelengths as they interact with matter. Uh, now there's a very specific reason why the blue light tends to scatter more than the red, and that's that's not about something we're going to get into here, but uh, it is actually a quantum effect. In fact, and the the other thing I was going to talk about was um, 
uh, continuous and emission spectra. And I think I'm just gonna kind of leave it at that for now. We'll start the next lecture with that. Um, but I think there's kind of some cool applications that we've gone through here that are relevant for, you know, not just quantum physics, but for our understanding of the universe as a whole. So, um, okay, so I'm done here. <laughs>